Ernie, Jack, uh, as we get set for a 3A championship, we've got a team, well, two teams that really know the finals. Each has won a couple of state titles. Bloomington Central won in 82, then back again in 1990. Here they are playing on their own home field as a visiting team. Well, Bob, you know, Bob Mays has paid his dues. He had a rough year last year at 2-7, and seven, but... That rough year obviously has paid off because here they are back in the state championship game. All right, Mays has got a small roster, only about 30 players, but is certainly a talented one. Mays, an assistant coach here when they won back in the 80s. Now, his first final as a head coach. And he has got a quarterback he's developed. His name is Tom Bardwell. Didn't play organized football on a high school level until he was a junior last year. Well, Tom Bardwell came out, and he certainly has done the job. Last year they were 2-7, and seven, and this year they're in the state championship game. He has accounted for over 1,500 yards of offense, throwing for 1,100 yards and rushing for over 500. He is a real key to their offense. All right. Uh, Ducoin, no stranger to the finals either. Alan Martin has been the coach here for seven years. He's been in the playoffs every single season, and he's also won two state titles the last just a couple of years ago. He's got a diversified backfield. They run a wishbone. David Lanham, number 41, the fullback, he's 900 yards of offense. They really do have an interesting offense. They spread the wealth. Dave Lanham, is, has, as you mentioned, has 900 yards of offense offense and he really is the go-to guy but they also have another running back who is Carnes and his father was formerly the head coach here at DuCoin and this is the third son to have played in the state championship game down here in Bloomington. Well, That's I don't know, quite maybe, a, is that hereditary or what? Uh, well he must have learned something because Jarrett's the only one who isn't a quarterback but he is an outstanding running back and we will see quite a bit of him. Uh, we also have Joe Passion on the field with us we're going to check in with Joe right now. All right, Mike, it is Bloomington Central Catholic, the visiting team, ironically, on their home field all year long. They won the toss, and they will go on defense to start things off. But before we start anything else off, let's send it up to our PA announcer and find out who these players are. Let's check up with Steve Adams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineups for this Class 3A state championship game featuring the Saints of Bloomington Central Catholic and the Indians of DuCoin High School. First, introducing the starting defensive lineup for the Saints of Central Catholic. Let's meet the head coach. Here is Bobby Mays. And now the starting defensive lineup at left end. Number 81, Todd Sproul. At left tackle, number 54, Bobby Crawford. At right tackle, number 73, Andy Hennigus. At right end, number 72, Ryan Hobart. At linebacker, number 55, Leo Flynn. At linebacker, Number 33, Chris Kiley. At linebacker, number 34, Kevin Brott. At defensive back, number 8, Andy Yeager. At defensive back, number 20, Deacon Provost. At defensive back, Number 22, Pat Finnegan. And at safety, number 17, Tom Bardwell. Those are the Saints of Bloomington Central Catholic. And now, introducing the starting offensive lineup for the Ducoin. Introducing the starting offensive lineup for the Ducoin Indians. Here is the head coach of DuCoin, Al Martin. At left end, number 30, Jason Stanton. At left tackle, number 75, Nathan Higgerson. At left guard, number 64, Mike Poiter. At center, number 50, Travis Burris. At right guard, number 60, Clint Kirby. At right tackle, number 65, 
David Hamburger. At right in, number 82, Chad Harshi. At quarterback, number 17, Trent Waller. At halfback, number 21, Jared Carnes. At halfback, number 23, Jason James. And at fullback, number 41, David Lanham. Those are the Indians of DuCoin High School. Well, there's the DeCoin Indian. They are here trying for their third straight title. So is Bloomington Central Catholic here for their third straight title. A third title, we should say. And one of these two teams are going to come away with it. Let's go back to Joe Passion. Well, down here, just to update. Let's go back to Joe Passion. Well, down here, just to update you on the weather conditions for not only the Saints of Bloomington Central Catholic, but also for the visitors here that actually are the home team today for this 3A state championship game. The road to normal for both teams took on some very dangerous pass, but they got here anyways, despite it, the Saints beating Canton Pontiac for the second time this year, and then overhauling a big game with Aurora Central Catholic in the semis. Now for the home team here today, the Indians of DuCoin. Their road to the finals also took on some treacherous ways, but they were able to score some big points. The two tough games against Waterloo in the quarters and Carlinville in the semifinals, 14-8. Now, both teams have from different parts of the state of Illinois. The interesting part, of course, Bloomington is right here at home on their home field. DuCoin looks like there's no one left in that southern Illinois town. I think they're all here at Hancock Stadium. Here you see from southern Illinois, the River to River Conference in southern DuCoin Indians. The officials today are another veteran crew that will be around here. You've seen probably a lot of them. Gene Fuller is the head referee with the umpire. Tom Valley, John Pira, John Jennings, and Gary Apposition is the back judge. And now let's send it back upstairs for and Gary Apposition is the back judge. And now let's send it back upstairs for our kickoff under mild temperatures, calm winds, and only 45 degrees. Jason Sproul, number 82. Thank you, Joe. Kicks it off the sophomore, and it's taken by DuCoin at its own 23-yard line. Pulled down by one of the up men, Devin Jones, and Jones is stopped. And so the DuCoin Indians will go to work. Drums will go to work from their own 24-yard line, led by number 17, the quarterback, Trent Waller. First, let's take a look at the line. The line averages about 200 pounds, but Clint Kirby, number 60, is a 300-pounder there at right guard. In the backfield, Waller, Jared Carnes, Jason James started on this team two years ago as a sophomore. Jason Stanton and Chad Harvey are the receivers. And the ball is given right away to Jason James. And Jason James, a quick hitter over the left side, gets good yardage out to the 29. The defense for Bloomington Central Catholic, not a very heavy group, but very quick. Todd Stroll, Bobby Crawford, Andy Hennigas, and Ryan Hobart up front. They'll show you a lot of different looks. Leo Flynn got a 31 ACT, and he can play too. Chris Kylie and Bardwell, Jaeger, Provost, Finnegan, and Tom Bardwell, the defensive backfield. Second down, gain of seven, call it second and three from the wishbone. And the give once again. This time it goes to Jared Carnes. Carnes, number 21, 956 yards on the season. And he is up close to a first down. Jared Carnes, whose father, Bob Carnes, led this team to several state championships. The third and last brother to play down, brother to play down here. Jared Carnes' brother, quarterback two years ago. When DuCoin won the Class 3A. Just underway here, the first first down of the ball game, and here come the Indians from their own 34. And the give inside. It goes to Lanham, his first carry, and David Lanham, 19 touchdowns on the year, gets a couple of yards to the 36. 
This is a wishbone formation, but uh, I don't know how much option they run on the perimeter. I think it's more of a wishbone look with a lot of power foot in the perimeter. I think it's more of a wishbone look with a lot of power football coming at you. There is Lanham, basically an inside runner. The other two, Carnes and James, can take it outside. Gain of two, second and eight. Good hole opening up for Carnes, and Carnes across the 40, about two yards short of a first down. Across the 40, about two yards short of a first down. Before he is stopped by Chris Kiley. Kiley, the middle linebacker. There's Jared Carnes. And the big question is, how long will number 33, Chris Kiley, be able to play? Uh, because he suffered a neck stinger, and he uh, had some numbness, and they're hoping that he will be all right. Third down play here for DeCoin and the give up the middle. First down yardage and more. Breaking is James. Jason James on his way. Jaeger trying to catch him. And Andy Jaeger, the last man, makes the play. Otherwise, it was six quick points for DeCoin. Andy Jaeger had the angle. And at the beginning, Jack, it didn't look as though anybody would catch Jason James. Just a good effort here. But again, what it is, it's a, it's a counter lead. Back leading up. They go with the back one way. Just a good job of running right here. Spins off. At this point right here, it looks like he's gone. But a good angle of pursuit right here. Looked like he was tripped up. And here comes the backside corner. Into the scene, safe net touchdown. To the 14-yard line after a 40-yard corner. Into the scene, safe net touchdown. To the 14-yard line after a 40-yard gain by Jason James. And there he is as they set the wishbone. Again, inside, this is James. And guy just sprints 40 yards. Call his number again. Ryan Hobart coming up to make the stop, the defensive right hand. Jason James started as a sophomore. When DeCoin beat Marengo here, 19 and 92. All the way back then, Jack. Seems like only yesterday. Eight minutes, 50 seconds to minutes, 50 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Just the start of things, the Class 3A championship. The coin opening drive. They give it to Carnes and Jared Carnes inside the five. Again, just power football, doubling down in the tackle, and both backs kicking out on that outside linebacker. All this has been done on the ground. You can see the double down right there and the fullback kicking out and the lead back leaving up on the linebacker. Nice job here by Carnes. Second effort. Dick and Provost making the stop. It's been the brother bread and butter play coming down the field. A power in both directions. Power in both directions. From the three. Line up. Close to the goal line and David Lanham taking it inside off the left tackle. Just a cosmetic effect here when they come down here. They come out of the wishbone and go into the full house T backfield, which means the backs just come up a little bit so they're all even across the front, giving better running angles for the fullback, basically. There's the DeCoin Brain Trust. Things going well right now. Now, second and goal from the one. Waller, the quarterback. Again, the full house. Again, Lanham. Touchdown, India. David Lanham goes the final yard to complete the opening drive. Complete the opening drive. And Jack, as in the 1A game, the opening drive turns into a touchdown. They didn't waste much time. And again, it was one of those situations where we look at a wishbone team that doesn't run the option. It's just power football. And they just rammed the ball right down the field between the tackles. And the kick, no good, no good by Ryan Summers, number 88. So we will come back up the field and show you the touchdown again. You see right here, the fullback just following in there, kick out block, just a two yard. Two-yard run, but the key to this is the surge of the offensive line. Whenever you get down there, it's always it's just watch the offensive line. You'll you'll be able to tell right off the bat if they're going to get inside. 7:44 to go. You look at Bob Mays finding himself down six nothing after a protracted drive, and you can see Bobby 
That Already really is concerned. Meanwhile, on the other side, Al Martin knows he's got a long way to go yet. It's one of those situations where, you know, on the first drive to go right down the field and score number in the state four, championship, eight, it's uh, frustrating for the coach that's on the other end of that situation, but for the coach to score, it's kind of a relief. And also, it's a character builder right off the bat. Jason Stanton, number 30, a senior, will kick off. Your deep man, number eight, Andy Yeager. He's on the right. Number number 30, a senior will kick off. Your deep men, number eight, Andy Yeager. He's on the right. Number four, Corey Parker, who's a burner. He is on the left. And it's bounced. Taken by one of the up men. And turning the corner. And getting good yardage close to the 50-yard line. That's Kevin Brott, one of the linebackers on defense, and one of the backup uh, runners brought down by number 31, Jay Petrie. And that is his name, Jay period. 17-yard return. And so now we will get to see... And so now we will get to see the Bloomington Central offense for the first time. And, Jack, uh, no wishbone here. No, it's a multiple offense. They'll run a lot of formations at you. And, of course, uh, Bardwell is, a, is the focal point of it. In motion is Pat Finnegan. And the give to the fullback, Chris Kiley. And Kiley, four yard, four yard or two. Outside veer there. The offensive line, Ted Wolfs, a sophomore. Leo Flynn, Steinbach, a fine center. Hennigus, a two-time all-conference, all-area player. Ryan Hobart is the right tackle. Bardwell, Corey Parker, Provost, Finnegan, and David Wiltz are the receivers. Game of three, second and seven. Deep back is Parker. Quick look for Bardwell. He throws it across to Finnegan. Short yardage met by a host of black jerseys, led by number 22, T.C. Craig. 25, Zeb Martin. There's the defense. Vogel, Dunmire, Jason Waller, the cousin of the quarterback, Mike Poiter. The linebackers and uh, the linebackers, Carter Martin is the coach's son, Patrick Tolliver, Jagger, Jared Carnes, Elder James, and T.C. Craig in the backfield. Third down, a short one. Receivers to the right. And wedging him out. Bardwell, and he needed to get to the 46, and he should have it. Yes, he does. First down, first down. Brought down by Jason Waller, number 67. Well, the Saints, well, the Saints can uh, continue the drive here. It'll also build their confidence after DeCoin drove down the field and scored. So uh, let's say if the Saints could go down the field and score, we might be in for a real barn burner. First and ten, receiver in the slot. Other receiver split right. Bardwell again to throw it, and it's shot over the head of Andy Yeager as they tried the same play, this time to the right side. What they do is the other, it's, it's basically a wide receiver screen because the other wide receiver just picks up the man that's, that's assigned to him or that zone, and it just blocks him to get the ball here. We'll take a look. Just a quick pass out here, a three-step drop. You'll see the other receiver coming out to block the man that was assigned to the receiver. Right here, just uh, thrown over his head a little bit. He had a tough time even if he would caught it. Even though the crown of the field is high and the sides are low, you can't say though the crown of the field is high and the sides are low, you can't say that Bardwell was fooled by that because this is the field he plays all his games on. So he just overshot him. Here Bardwell on the rollout. Looks deep for Finnegan. Double coverage. And overshoots it. Finnegan thought he may have been pushed in the back, but the ball wasn't catchable. Finnegan. It was incomplete. And it brings up a third and ten. Coverage for DeCoin by number 22, T.C. Craig. Here's the roll. It does a nice job here of avoiding a stunt by the linebacker. Steps up underneath and just airs it out. And gets a shot after he airs it out. If you notice, Corey Parker, number four, was in there protecting his passer. And here Finnegan sort of stops. Yeah, the stops. receiver stops. Third passer. And here Finnegan sort of Yeah, the stops. receiver stops. Third and ten. 
Bardwell again, straight drop back, looking across, Open. and he completes it to David Wilkes. The end in between, right in the seam, inside the 20. Excellent play by Bloomington Central, 28 yards. Brought down by Ryan Elder, number 84. Nice throw. The uh, wide receiver here almost screws the play up because he's bringing his man right into the scene right here who ends up making the tackle instead of staying up the sidelines. But an excellent throw and a big first down. Instead of staying up the sidelines. But an excellent throw and a big first down. Well, we talk about Bardwell being able to mix up his plays and that he does. So first and 10 on the 18-yard line of DuCoin. This is the first march for Bloomington Central. DuCoin scored on its. Bardwell with the option, kicks it out to Corey Parker, and Parker is mashed by number 14, David Carter. Carter, one of the backup linebackers, the right outside linebacker. You know, and I misspoke myself at the open as we take a look here. Uh, second title for Bloomington Central came in 1987. They made the finals in 1990 and ended up losing, I believe, by a field goal and over team. So, ended up losing, I believe, by a field goal and over team. So, uh, and the team that beat him was the team that won the 1A championship today, Sterling. So put that in your trivia troll. I'm stuffing it right in there right now. I understand. All right. Loss of four. Back to the 22. So second 14 passing situation. Bardwell into the middle and it's intercepted by number 25, Zeb Martin. And Zeb Martin with the big turnover to the 23-yard line and... A 10-yard interception as the pass was intended over the middle. He was open initially, but by the time the ball was delivered, they closed on him. You can see right now, he just the linebacker was came underneath and made a nice play. He didn't see that linebacker coming over. He did a real good job of uh, with the underneath coverage coming in here. You can see right there, he telegraphed it a little too long. And the linebacker came underneath and made a nice play, a big play. And that linebacker happens to be the seventh. A little too long. And the linebacker came underneath and made a nice play, a big play. And that linebacker happens to be the son of the coach, so, you know, he may get an extra drumstick tomorrow. First and ten to Coyne, stopping the drive on the turnover with the six-to-nothing lead and back in business. And now the Coyne moves into a shift and flags are flying, whether Andy Hennigas jumped first or one of the offensive players moved, we'll find out. But Hennigas did move the down lineman. Again, that's the frustration. And that's the call. The man, the man right on the center. Watch the man right over the center right there. The ball's not moving, but he's moving. He must have forgot that he was now on defense instead of offense. Well, they've got nine moving. He must have forgot that he was now on defense instead of offense. Well, they've got nine two-way players for Bloomington Catholic. So that might be an issue. Four minutes, two seconds to go. First and five now. Ball's on the 27. Inside handoff to Lannan. And Lannan doesn't get much. Maybe a yard stopped by Leo Flynn, the linebacker, number 55. Interesting that they broke the, broke up the bone there and went to a uh, wide open formation, slapped to one side with a split and only one back, thinking that they could probably draw those linebackers outside and pop the fullback up the middle, but it didn't work. The ends are messenger in place for our Martin. Ryan Elder comes in with this one. Second and five, call it no game. Now they go back into the conventional wishbone with the two tight ends. Second man. And once again, this is Carnes and Jared Carnes. Another good gainer. First down yardage. Chris Kiley making the stop, but not before the ball comes out to the 38-yard line. I wonder how many times over, over that Thanksgiving dinner yesterday that his brothers talked to him about but not before it's first and ten for the Indians. How big it is to be in the state championship game. All the advice that he got from his other family members. It is to be in the state championship game. All the advice that he got from his other family members. And Yeager made the initial hit. First and ten. DeCoin keeps moving. And again, the inside handoff to Lanham. And Lanham gets good yardage across the 40. He can throw those on the stop. They're really doing a nice job of mixing up the play calling. Running traps and counters and power. They have yet to put the ball in the air. See right there, just a little counter trap coming right up the gut. Just keep those linebackers honest inside. And see right there, just a little counter trap 
coming right up the gut. Just keep those linebackers honest inside. And the linebacker Kylie comes out, replaced by the freshman John Bardwell, the brother of the quarterback. Once again, it's Carnes, and again, Carnes with a quick hit, excellent speed, gets into the secondary across midfield to the 44. Kevin Brott making the stop, but again, ripping holes through that Saints line of Bloomington Central. He is really running hard. He's getting some nice seams and he's exploding up inside. Nothing fancy, just running hard. Jared Carnes averages over seven yards a carry. He's doing better than that today. You see the two backs leading up in there. He just keeps those legs moving, those shoulders facing the end. Those legs moving, those shoulders facing the end zone. First and ten from the 44. This time it's Jason James who had broken free ball is loose and looks like it was covered by Kevin Brott of Bloomington Central. Saints say they have the ball. And now DeCoin says it has the ball, but it certainly looked as though Kevin Brott was first there. Everybody's pointing in opposite directions, and what's the call? No, two comes up with it. Underneath all of that. Sure looked like they had gotten it. Boy, I tell you what, we can see it again. DuCoin keeps possession. Watch as the ball hits the turf. Textbook tackle here, putting the helmet right on the ball. Watch the pop coming right there. Puts the helmet on the ball. Ball's on the ground. And there was a black jersey underneath Kevin Brotts. And there was a black jersey underneath Kevin Brotts. So it's second down. And nine yards to go. First pass as Waller shoots it all alone was James. Wide open, too. Fabulous call, but he just overshot him. Chris Kiley back in on the coverage. That's one of those calls where you make it and it's wide open and you don't get it. You're really biting your lip because later when you come back, they're going to make a couple adjustments on that kind of a flow off that play action. Right here, they just do not get anybody out in that flat, and the back is coming. The lead back is right there, wide open. Boy, just play catch with him. Just throw it out. Just play catch with him. Just throw it out there. But again, he's going downhill. Brings up a third down. And they break up the formation here. They sit Carnes in motion with the pitch, and Carnes again with room. One man to beat. And Jared Carnes. Nope. Right by the goal line, a touchdown. Jared Carnes, 43 yards, what an effort, excellent block, tripped up in the last minute, but falls into the end zone for the second score for DuPont. Great job blocking at the point of attack and just a real good effort by Carnes cutting back against the grain, getting it into the end zone. Excitement here at Hancock Stadium. At Hancock Stadium. And let's see what they'll do for the extra point. They missed the first placement, and here it looks like they're going to go for two. Two point conversion attempt for Detroit. And the ball is loose on the ground, covered up by Bloomington Central. So again, the conversion fails. And with one minute 24 seconds to go, Detroit has a 12 0 lead. The eight yard drive and a 43 yard run for a touchdown, but was it? Let's take a look. Good toss and a kickout block right there by the back. A nice cutback right here. Now it's off to the races, but what we're going to see right at the conclusion of the run is kind of an interesting call. You be the judge at home. Is he in or isn't he? Right about there, he starts going down, folks. Take another look here. Again, unless he's got awful long arms and legs, which he doesn't, he's already down right here. Not to say that they wouldn't have punched it in from the one, but he doesn't. He's already down right here. Not to say that they wouldn't have punched it in from the one, but generous call. Back it goes. That's Andy Yeager, number eight, and the kick is bounced again, taken by the up back. And this is Corey Parker and Parker to the 40 yard line. So good field position for Bloomington Central Catholic. Could have been a 14 point switch over there, 23 yard return. Brought down by number 44, Devin Jones, again on special teams. There's Jared Carnes, 83 yards already, and we haven't even played a quarter. A quarter. We got a flag on the play here. Maybe a clip. 
Let's hear what uh, Gene Fowler's got to say. They're holding on the receiving team on a run back. Ten yard penalty from the infraction. That's a big ring he's got on his finger, isn't it? <laughs> or is, is that the whistle? Oh. But the engagement wing I've given my wife. I see, I see. Anyway, it brings the ball back to the 24. And Bob Mays continues to find things not going smoothly for him. But here, as we can tell you last week in the semifinal, this team was down 14 0 in the first half and came back to win after being thoroughly outplayed for 48 minutes. Bardwell again shoots it over the head of Jaeger. Second time he's gone to that play with the same result as Bardwell and Jaeger cannot hook up. Well, you know, when we play on AstroTurf Fields, there's a very large ground between the hash marks. It's so much higher than it is between the hash marks than it is on the sideline. And those wide receivers, once they get out the hash, between the hash mark and the sideline, are actually going downhill. That's right, Jack. What we said. They play here all the time. But they don't practice here all the time. That's true. They only play games here. Two receivers out to the right. Second and ten. Bardwell with time now being chased. Ooh, trying to elude the rush, doing a good job so far. Puts it up and trying to come back for the ball is Finnegan, but Bardwell did well just to avoid a sack. He had a, he had people open early if he would have had time to be able to throw it. He had two guys open in the middle of the field on a post route. Right here he had people open, but he had no time to get the ball off. Bardwell's a big guy. He's 6'1", 180, but tough to see over some of those big black helmets, too. Does a nice job here of avoiding a big loss. And you see there's a lot of coverage on the right side. There were people open on the left. These guys did a nice job of scrambling back. Usually when a coverage on the right side, there were people open on the left. These guys did a nice job of scrambling back. Usually when a guy is flushed out of the pocket, you have rules. The deep guy comes back and the short guy goes deep when you have a scramble on. Parker split out to the right, slot back left, and the receiver split left on third and ten. Bardwell again under pressure, and he kicks it out. This time it's complete to the safety valve, Chris Kiley. Kiley brought down by Patrick Tolliver, the outstanding linebacker, and uh, looks good enough for first down yardage. But again, we've got a flag in the backfield. It's probably holding. That'll be from the point of the foul. That's a big difference in high school. Again, those holding calls are from the point of the foul, not the line of scrimmage, Jack. And, of course, pass interference is 15 yards from the line of scrimmage as opposed to uh, the pro rule where it's where the interference comes from. They're clipping on the offense half the distance of the goal, still third down. Well, we can see the clip coming up here. Ryan Hobart, the right tackle. And instead of a first down, they have number the 72. Of the goal line. See, his helmet is behind the defender, and that is a clip. If he had got his head in the front, he's okay. Got his head behind him. And that is a clip. If he had got his head in the front, he's okay. Got his head behind him. Good call by the officials. So Bloomington Central's got to get to the 34, and they are on their own seven. So it is third and 28. And they go to the draw play. And Good safe call down here. You don't want to do anything crazy. Chris Kyle is stopped by uh, David Carter, the linebacker, and that'll bring up the fourth down. Still deep in Saints territory. And the punter will be Jason Sproul. Bobby Mays is not a happy camper right now. And they're going to wait and get this one off for the second quarter. That is the end of the first quarter. Here in Normal, Illinois, with the score in the 3A championship game, DeCoin on top of Bloomington Central Catholic by two touchdowns. 12 0. DeCoin's Indians leading the Saints of 23 Central Catholic 12 0, as we get set for a fourth down punt here by Central from its own goal line. Goal line. Jason Sproul, the sophomore, under pressure here. Single safety. Is Jason James at his own 40. And this one is a short punch shank, but takes a central roll, comes across midfield. Oh, mercy. Boy, did he get a good roll on that to the 45 yard line of DeCoin. 43 yard punt, I'd say 30 of it on the ground, huh? Meanwhile, let's take a look at what happened earlier today in the All State 3A game 12 to nothing. 
the guys in black, they are leading and they are on the march again. Here's James around the left side. Doesn't get much, but still it's over five yards. Tom Bardwell coming up from the safety spot. There's a story. There's the story. 153 yards to five for DeCoin. That's the rushing total. We remember now last week, Mike, that total that we had between Aurora Catholic and Bloomington yeah. was uh, quite incredible. Well, it was two to one, I think. Aurora Catholic uh, had about 357 yards, and Bloomington had 180 something. Then, right, in the first quarter, their first half they had 64. So first half they say, ran all of 10 plays to 43, but, you know, Bloomington won the game. Sometimes you're better off being lucky. That's good. We're looking for first down yardage. And that is Jason James again, and he is close. Looks like we'll get a measurement Once as the ball is spotted Jason near the 46. James. It's very close to the first of down. Bloomington Central. To Coins offensive line, not particularly big. Well, let's take that back. I was going to say, except for Clint Kirby over a 300-pounder at right guard, but Nathan Higgerson, the left tackle at uh, 237, is no puppy either. Well, about a football length. Short. Well, I would have to say this when the introductions were being made, Bloomington Central looked awful slim as they were being introduced. And you know, the television puts 10 pounds on you. Wow. I mean, they really look slim. In a helmet and pads, no less. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that puts 10 pounds on you. Yeah. That puts 10 pounds on you. Here is Trent Waller. Leading the team up on third and inches. Oh, mercy. Bloomington again jumps. He has more yardage right now than the offense does. We'll take a look there at uh, look like Derek Steinbach. And Steinbach got into the neutral zone, and you can't undo that in high school ball. Got into the neutral zone, and you can't undo that in high school ball. Once you cross that plane, it's an automatic dead ball. And he is right, right that's on the football. Ducoin and that's the inflection of the voice of the quarterback line. drawing him off. And I mean, these are things that you actually work on. But the reverse of that, you work on that with the defense also, that that guy is watching the ball, not listening to the cadence. Well, we haven't mentioned uh, Trent Waller much, the quarterback, but that doesn't mean uh, he isn't important to this offense. He doesn't make many mistakes, which is what Al Martin likes, and that's why he's there. So it's a first and ten. Receivers split right in the slot. And here comes the pitch to Jared Carnes. Flag again, and Carnes has had that play all day. Nearly broke away again. Stopped over there by uh, number 34, Kevin Broad, along with Tom Bardwell. But we'll see again what the penalty is. I think we've got a clip here, Mike, and a crack back from the wideout. Pick up of nearly 10 yards. A clip. That's a preliminary signal. So this play will come back. 10 minutes, 5 seconds to go here in the 3A championship game. DuCoin with a 12-0 lead over Bloomington Central Catholic. Well, the coin has been able to rebound from some of these penalties and pick up those first downs again, but they've got a big walk off here. At the top of your screen to your left, you see right there the crack. Right there. You just saw right there. He came back on that corner, and that's where the clip was. Well, Bloomington Central hurt by penalties, and there's a 15 total yards against a coin. So now it brings up Humble. And the ball is on the ground. Looks like Bloomington Central has it. And a mistake by DuCoin, and Central has got good field position. Trent Waller, number 17. On the quarterback, had a problem with the exchange. I think Kevin Brock came up with the ball. Let's go to Joe Passion. Well, guys, we have talked, as you did earlier, about Bob Carnes and how he built this DuPont team into a great power, handed it off to Al Martin, and he's picked it up without losing a beat with a couple of state championship appearances. Bob Carnes is up in the box with the coaches for DuCoin calling the defensive signals. And by that play, a great example that 
Bob Carnes is still as sharp as he ever was. And his kids, of course, have proven that. He's up there in the red hat in the far corner calling the defensive signals down to the sidelines. And this defense has been really the base of success of this club all season long. Okay, thanks a lot, Joe. Tom Bardwell sweeping right. right. And he picked up three yards down to the 36-yard line. Central with a good opportunity here, and the give is to Corey Parker. Parker can break it. Tripped up inside. Looked like uh, Shane Dunmire, number 73. Number 73. Corey Parker playing with a uh, shoulder bruise. Did not have a real good ball game last week against Aurora Central Catholic. When I spoke with one of the assistant coaches prior to the game, he mentioned that he had a deep shoulder bruise, and they weren't sure how much playing time his playing time was going to get. But there is no tomorrow, so he wanted to play. Third and three is set up in the eye. Provost in motion. And the pitch to Parker, and Parker swallowed up once again by David Carter. And David Carter made an excellent play. The two fakes did better than the actual play. Well, what's happening is he's really stuffing the stock block on the outside. You'll see right here, he's just coming up. And we're not getting the job done on the outside there with the stock, stock block, and they're doing a good job on assignment football with the option. Everybody has their man. Well, from the 35, a decision here on fourth and six. And the 35, a decision here on fourth and six. And the decision has been made. Central will go for it. Jaeger to the near side. Robos to the far side. Bardwell going for it all. And overshoots number 22, Pat Finnegan. Finnegan starts slowing down a little bit. I think if he would have kept running, it might have been there. It looked like the ball had the distance and it was thrown well. And let's see it again. Take a look at it. He, start, he turns on his heels right here. Now, right there, you can see if he kept on running into the end zone, the ball is there. He stops to turn on his heels, and he's got him beat. Now, earlier in the ball game, he did the same thing, and I don't know whether it's the lights or he thinks he's outrunning his ball game. He did the same thing, and I don't know whether it's the lights or he thinks he's outrunning his arm, but uh, if he keeps running, he might have the ball right on the coverage right the there zone. by T.C. Craig. And once again, Ducoin has the ball with 7.37 to go on its own 35-yard line. And Lanham straight ahead to the 40. Leo Flynn makes the stop. What a diversified offense here. Without throwing the ball, they have so many options. Lanham, Carnes, James, inside, outside. They do a great job of play calling, diversification of the offense. The key to that is the offensive line has to do the job, and they're doing that tonight. And Trent Waller, as we said, who doesn't make mistakes, was upset over the last fumble, so he is back. Trying to atone, and he gives this off. Straight dive overhead to Jared Carnes. Jared Carnes carry. Rather tame carry for Carnes, considering what he's been doing. Picks up a couple of more yards, and that will bring up a third down. It's always amazing to me as a coach that, that the kids that deserve the most credit get so little of it. And that is the offensive and defensive lines. Obviously, without them functioning and doing a great job. The other people can't deserve the most credit gets so little of it. And that is the offense and defensive lines. Obviously without them functioning and doing a great job, the other people can't do anything and yet they get very little publicity. Third and two. Once again, it's Carnes. Once again, he's got a first down. Ridden out of bounds by Bardwell. But DeCoin just keeps grinding out the yardage. 626 to go in the half. Again, just a power play kicking out. He does a nice job of reading and of bouncing it outside. Just good old fashioned hard running. You can see right there where he bounces outside. Now Finnegan tries to take him down but can't get him low. Carnes is not not all that. You can see right there where he bounces outside. Now Finnegan tries to take him down but can't get him low. Carnes is not not all that big. He's the biggest of the rushers at 6'1, 195. And you see the first down situation, and again, it's a first down for DeCoin. Here's James on the sweep left. Inside the 45, brought down by a host of white shirts. Ryan Hobart and Andy Hennigus leading the way. 
made the tackle for Central Catholic. And Kevin Broad over there. And we have another penalty flag thrown. And this may be a clip as DeCoin starts to move backward. That's probably what it is. The clipping on the offense, 15 yard penalty, still first down. One of the only ways that Bloomington has stayed in the uh, ball game is with some of these penalties that have taken uh, the coin you know, out of the and, you, and you don't say that lightly because Bloomington has been a resourceful team all year. If you don't put these guys away, they're going to come back and bite you. Let's take a look here. There's right Lana. there. Yeah. Now that's uh, that's a questionable call. It looked like he had his helmet in the front. It's a questionable call. It looked like he had his helmet in the front initially on a contact. This is about a first and thirty. And the pitch to James gets through the left side. And Jason James gets all but 10 of it back to midfield. And James was cornered but still pulled away. Finally brought down over there by uh, it looked like Broad. They're running hard. There's no doubt about that. And they're getting a good job of, of blocking the point of attack. The, the backs block extremely well for each other. If you'll notice, uh, actually, he bounces outside. Watch him kick out here, but he gets outside here. Does a nice job of running hard. Getting linemen downfield doing the job. Just some good power running to pick up that 10 yards. Now they're back power running to pick up that 10 yards. Now they're back to second and 11. Kylie on the tackle. Full house backfield. To throw. And intended and overshooting Jason Stanton. Again, just enough passing to keep the opposition off balance. And just, you can just see enough. Waller doing it. He, he can throw the ball. Just enough to keep the secondary on their heels where they're not coming up real hard on the run. Just a little play action pass and no, no real sophisticated route. Just a little out route to keep that corner with it because they run so much outside they want to keep that corner off So they run that kind of a route and keep him on his heels. So he's mysticated route Just a little out route to keep that corner with it because they run so much outside They want to keep that corner off so they run that kind of a route and keep him on his heels So he's not coming up that hard on the cross Third and 11 Stanton in motion Now they set two receivers right from the eye and the give to Carnes, and Carnes gets four. Stopped by Chris Kiley, well short of a first down. And uh, they will have to punt. I think that was confusion from the beginning. Beginning, it's, it's not a well-conceived play. Four minutes, 54 seconds to go first half. DeCoin and Black, two first-quarter touchdowns, leading 12 to nothing over Bloomington Central Catholic. There's Jason James, who's deep. That's yes, Jason James trying to get the kick off. And out of bounds it goes. And Jason James made something out of nothing right there. Jason James taking over the punting. And Bloomington Central will be in business with 429 to go when we come back. Bloomington Central trailing 12 to nothing, starting first and 10 from its own 16. Penalties and turnovers have hurt them seriously. Four minutes, 29 seconds to go from the eye. Bardwell, the quarterback. Parker and Kylie are your two setbacks, and this is Corey Parker, and he can't go anywhere. Stopped very quickly at the line of scrimmage by Jason Waller. And while we wait for the next play, Jack, the 3A All-State team, you're on. This is something new that we've done this year. The Illinois High School Football Coaches Association has named an All-State team with every level, the 1A, the 2A, 3A, on through 6. And this is a look at your 3A All-State team as named by the Illinois High School Football Coaches Association. A very prestigious All-State team, we think. No doubt about it. Of course, a lot of the, lot of the All-State team is wrestling right now, so couldn't make the same. Prestigious All-State team, we think. No doubt about it. Of course, a lot of the, lot of the All-State team is wrestling right now, so couldn't make the ceremony, but we congratulate everyone. No gain, second and ten. Bardwell over the middle looking, and it was a surprise as much as anybody else to Deacon Provost. Defending was uh, T.C. Craig on the coverage, but Provost, ball almost hit him in the face mask. Deacon, when you go out for a pass, then you got to look for the ball. He was open in that seam for about ten yards, but he never turned back to look. 
a little frustration on the quarterback's part when you throw when you put the ball on the money and you got a receiver that's not even looking. Finnegan out to the right. Jaeger at Provost to the left along with Parker. They said three receivers left. Look at the rushing yardage. 173 of 193 yards for those two to coin running backs. James and Carnes. Third and ten. Bardwell flag goes down and Bardwell goes down. And then we got a holding call. Dragged down by uh, Jared Vogel, number 85, the defensive right end. And the flag is down. Either way, this does not look good for Bloomington Central. And here is the conversation. 3.31 to go. And it's an illegal block. And it's going to go against Central. Now, that's blocking below the waist, Jack. I think that they'll, uh, they'll decline it. Would bring up a fourth down if they do. It'd be third down and half the distance. If they take it, they want them to kick the ball. Fourth down. And they do decline the penalty, so. Let's take a look at the left side right here. Again, it, kind of an interesting call. He started up high, and interesting call. He started up high, and ended up coming low. And he made the call. I just, I'm not so sure about that. Stroll gets the punt off. This time it comes back towards the central goal line and it is down inside the 40 by Deacon Provost. And once again, DePoint's going to have excellent field position on the opposition 38 after that 29 yard punt. Well, this is going to be a challenge for the Mays family clan over there uh, who certainly work. Uh, well, this is going to be a challenge for the Mays family clan over there uh, who certainly work. Uh, Steve, one of the brothers, coaches the quarterbacks. Bobby, of course, the head coach. Mike is there, the defensive coordinator. And Doug, who quarterbacked the state champions in 82, is sort of a volunteer assistant. they got to put their heads together. Meanwhile, DeCoin is moving again. The ball carrier is number 21, Jared Carnes. And Jared Carnes stopped by Hennigus and Flynn after a and short gain inside uh, the 35. Gain of three yards and second down at seven at the 34. Here's a good look at Trent Waller, 5'11 senior quarterback. Here's a good look at Trent Waller, 5'11 senior quarterback. Does a nice job mechanically handing the ball off on the counters and all the various plays. You know. And when he does throw, he completes nearly 70%. So he gets the job done. Game of three, second and seven. Jason James trying his meal ticket play, and this time coming up quickly to make the stop. Finnegan from the cornerback spot. They've gone outside more here in the second quarter than they did in the first quarter. In the first quarter, they spent most of their time running between the tackles. In the second quarter, they've tried to get outside, but you can look at the defensive movement there by Bloomington Catholic. They do a nice job of running to cut off those angles of pursuit there. They do a real job of running to cut off those angles of pursuit there. They do a real good job of getting into football. Well, with two minutes and 13 seconds to go on a third down and seven play coming up, Al Martin has called timeout to talk to his players because as much as Bloomington Central has been out play, Jack, you look at the scoreboard, and they are still only 12 points now. Granted, they haven't done anything to show any kind of life except for that drive that was stopped by the interception by Zeb Martin. But there's Bobby Mays there. His team looks to be out of it. No way. Well, not considering what's happened in the playoffs, and certainly last week against an outstanding Aurora Central Catholic team where they were totally outplayed, and yet they won the ball game. And, uh, you know, it's a situation where he probably feels this way, and so does his players. Yeah, well, let's talk about that for a second. The first half of the semifinal, Aurora Central runs 43 plays, Bloomington runs 10. All right, still, they're only losing 21 to 14. All right, at the end of the game, Aurora Central's got, as you see, the. the, the Ratio five to one in terms of total yardage. They were out at the end of the game. Aurora Central's got, as you see, the the, the ratio five to one in terms of total yardage. They were out gained last week, 357 yards to 183, and had 
two to one deficit in time of possession and win the game in overtime. So here's a big third and seven. Waller sets it up and beautifully intercepted by Deacon Provost, taking the ball out of the hands of Stroll. That was excellent coverage. Excellent coverage. It matter as we spoke about how. Check it for Chad was. Harsey. I'm sorry. The ball intended for Chad Harsey. You can see the linebacker right there jumps right on that tight end and comes underneath for the interception. Excellent coverage. So a big shot of adrenaline for Bloomington Central. The question with 205 and counting, although three timeouts remain. Bloomington Central. The question with 205 and counting, although three timeouts remain. Can the Saints capitalize? And here they go to Corey Parker, who has not been able to spring free, and that stays the same. Gain of four. Coming up one man short there. The, the, uh, they ran a counter trap coming back to the short side of the field. The guard kicks out. The tackle leads up, picks up the linebacker. But then it's a one-on-one. -on -one. There's one man short there in the blocking the perimeter. Ryan Elder, the cornerback, coming up to make the stop. There is Deacon Provost. Leading receiver on this team. 15 catches. Average is better than 22 a catch. 22 yards a catch. A catch and three touchdowns. Uh, one of the problems they're having now is getting the ball off. He's not getting real good protection. He's been forced to scramble. Finnegan splits right. Bardwell again with time. Now he's taken down. And what a sack by Dunmeyer. Shane Dunmeyer just grabbed Bardwell by the arm just as he was ready to uncork the pass. And he went... He went south instead of north. It looked like he was trying to sprint out or a semi-roll. You can see him here right now. He's starting out. And he's, the defensive end is working upfield right here and does a nice job of splitting that seam. And he almost takes his head off. And how Bardwell hung on to the ball. Also pretty amazing. Did he have anybody there? It looked like he had Provost there and he had Finnegan. But there was coverage now. Did he have anybody there? It looked like he had Provost there and he had Finnegan. But there was coverage now. Third and 11. They flip the screen to Corey Parker and down goes Parker. Carter, the linebacker, was there. That play wasn't going anywhere. Turned into another loss and with 23 seconds to go, Bloomington's going to have to kick and to coin no dummies they call timeout because that kick is going to come from the five yard line. We want to make sure they have a shot to either run it back and or coin block takes it. timeout. Bloomington, there is Al Martin. Bloomington has not had a first down since their opening drive that was stopped by the interception. Bloomington looks out of sync, Mike. They just uh, they just don't look like they're real comfortable out there today. Maybe that'll pick up in the second half. And yet, on the other hand, the only thing so far that has really stopped the coin is the coin itself with some of those penalties. All right, Bobby May is trying to get his troops motivated. Get him going with something into the uh, locker room here. Meanwhile, we can tell you that college basketball season has started at Sports Channel is your home for college hoop tomorrow live at 7 o'clock. DePaul opens up against Eastern Illinois Monday night at 7. It'll be Loyola. Against Northwestern and Inter City at 1 o'clock. DePaul opens up against Eastern Illinois. Monday night at 7, it'll be Loyola. Against Northwestern and Inter City at Clash. And Intra City Clash on Tuesday Live at 7. Notre Dame against Bobby Knight and the Hoosiers. And the punt gotten away quickly and nicely. Here is James taking it at his 48. And Jason James looking for room. Stopped by Kevin Dunn, number seven for Central. And 11 seconds left to go. 36 yards on the punt by uh, Jason Sproul. Well, they'll have one play or two plays to just air it out to get the ball down the field. You take a shot here, right? Absolutely. Or the other thing is because they might drop into coverage. Well, they've got nine seconds now. And they says because they might drop into coverage. Well, they've got nine seconds now and they start the clock up. So they are going to try to get a playoff. I thought they had one time out left, which would have been a smart call. One second. They do get the playoff and they will go conservative with Lanham. And Lanham is wrapped up by Ryan Hobart. And that brings the first half to a close. With DuCoin on the strength of two first quarter touchdowns, leading Bloomington Central 
And that man, Al Martin, is uh, leading Bloomington Central by a count of 12 to nothing. I don't know that I want to be in Joe Passion's shoes right now uh, talking to Bobby Mays because I don't think uh, Bobby's going to be real, real happy here. You know, as my grandmother used to say, it could be a lot worse for Bloomington Central than it is. Granted, they haven't been able to get started. They look out of sync. They are only down two touchdowns. And uh, I don't know if he's going to get them. We might have missed them. Uh, we shall see uh, what uh, two first half touchdowns by the DuPont Indians. Although they went without a point after, it's still good enough for a 12 to nothing. Half two first half touchdowns by the DuPont Indians. Although they went without a point after, it's still good enough for a 12 to nothing halftime lead over the visiting team officially, but. And Bloomington, they've always been the home team here at Hancock Stadium during the regular season. DuCoin leading over Bloomington Central Catholic, 12 to nothing. Joe Passion back with you here down on the field of Hancock. What's a home field advantage worth? Well, not much to this point. If you're Bloomington Central, this is where they play their home games. Today, they are on the visiting side of the field. Maybe that's it, Jack. Because Bloomington Central, aside from having no points, hasn't looked good in getting no points. They seem completely out of sync. DuCoin, meanwhile, has not been able to put Bloomington away. They only lead by two touchdowns. Well, that opening drive was a real good drive for DuCoin, but since then, it's really been DuCoin hurting themselves with the penalties. But remember, last week, Bloomington Catholic did this with Aurora Central Catholic, so maybe this is their script. They wait till the second half to perform. Yeah, we're not trying to create a story here. We're just pointing out history, and that has been the case with Bloomington Central. Meanwhile, let's show you the highlights from the first half. All the scoring came in the first quarter. Bloomington Central going seven. 76 yards with the opening kickoff. Here's Lanham on the one-yard plunge. Well, offensive line again has been the key. When they do move the ball, they do it well, and the offensive line has been the key for them. The one-yard plunge by David Lanham. The conversion was missed, 6 nothing. Then Bloomington Central came right back down the field, and they were driving until this play on a second down. Good coverage. Doesn't see the linebacker coming underneath, and he throws right into the coverage right here. Now, that killed a big drive at that particular point in the ball game. The linebacker, the coach's son, Al Martin's son, making the key interception there. And then DeCoin went the other way. Finally, from the 43, watch this run by Jared Carnes. Well, he's from good stock. Both his brothers have played in the state championship game. A great cutback here. I think there's a lot, a little holiday generosity right at the end of the drive when he is tackled on approximately the four-yard line, as you can look at it right here. But it is Thanksgiving, and apparently the officials felt uh, we're in a giving mood. Yeah, he certainly looked to be. But it is Thanksgiving, and apparently the officials felt uh, we're in a giving mood. Yeah, he certainly looked to be at least two yards short, but again, the way DuCoin was going, Who's to say they wouldn't have punched it in? The fact is, the touchdown was scored. It counted again a two point try miss. 12 0 the score, and no further scoring for the first half. And not to belabor the point, but again, this game is a lot closer than one might think when you look at those statistics and look at the total yardage. Well, you know, that's a kind of a scary thing. I just hope Bob Mays doesn't have those stats at halftime. He might just take a cab home because that would be scary. But again, it has been here, their script to come back in the second half. So maybe that's what we're going to see. And again, you see a big fat zero under passing yardage forward to coin. It doesn't matter. They've tried a couple of passes, haven't completed a one. Then again, in the 1A game this morning, Sterling Newman only threw twice, completed one for 50-yard touchdown. So this game is being won on the ground. We'll be back with second half action when we come back here to Bloomington. Joe Passion's down on the field, and he's got Bob Mays with him. Go ahead, Joe. Boy, you get right back to your team. Coach Martin, give us a little bit of idea. 12-0 is never a safe cushion against any team, especially Bloomington. That's right. We know they're a second-half ball club. We know they're an opportunist ball ball club, and, you know, they made a history of coming back to second half. Their, their kids won't quit. We know that. They've got a history of that. So uh, we went back out, you know, we went in the locker room, and uh, we've been saying it all year. We want to just become a better team the second half. And, uh, you know, we've got one more half to play in this, this season, and, and we're just asking the kids if they can uh, get to be uh, a better a better ball club the second half. And, uh, you know, they said they could, so we just want to go out and be a better ball club. All right, Coach, go get them that second half, and we'll send it in the meantime back up to Mike Lederman and Jack McInerney. 
Well, obviously that was not Bobby Mays. That was Al Martin, whose team is leading. Let's go back to Joe with Bob Mays. All right, we're bopping around here, and Bob Mays has been kind enough to talk to us a little bit. You've been down before at the half. You've come back before with success. How will it be done today? We just got to block better. We didn't block very good. I bet, you know, that's our worst half a block. We didn't block anybody. We didn't sustain blocks. we got to get some kind of run game to go with our pass. Their linebackers are so deep. We can't get any routes, uh, you know, in that middle range area. We got to try to establish some run. All right, coach, go get him. Have a great second half. Thank you. All right, Bob Mays, and of course he came back from a two touchdown deficit in the semifinals last week on this field. Maybe he'll have enough to do it again. In the meantime, Ducoin leads here, 12 to nothing. Let's spend it back up to Mac and to Mike Lederman. All right, Joe, do you think that Bob was spitting in between his teeth, talking between his teeth? He's a little, a little concerned as well. He should. Be. Well, I think that, and I think he was. Doubling up his toes. Uh, else there. I think he was. I think he was upset. There's no doubt about it. They did not, as we mentioned earlier, they looked out of sync. They did not perform well. And of course, with one half of football for the state championship, they've got they've got no tomorrow when it comes to football. And they're two running backs, Chris Kiley. No tomorrow when it comes to football. And they're two running backs, Chris Kiley and Corey Parker. Really, were stymied, absolutely stymied. Now we told you about uh, Parker having that shoulder bruise, and uh, uh, certainly he's not 100 percent. But uh, as Bob May said, the blocking just was not there to free those guys up. Well, you know, unfortunately, as I had mentioned earlier, and I don't want to be too redundant as I usually am, but the <laughs> Department you know, of Redundancy if you Department. Don't yeah. get that job out up front. It's just not going to happen. And Bloomington didn't do a, a good job. And they, you know, they've they've lived by the run, and they're going to die by the run. And the offensive line is 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 got to do something in the second half. Well, you see some numbers there, which you know, a, as we show you these numbers, we realize how meaningless they can be. And, and this is uh, not to put down statistics, but when you get to this level, when you get to this game, you are meeting a team that is every bit as good as you. And their numbers are just as amazing as yours. And what matters is what's happening right here. And right now, it's 12 to nothing for those folks. The Indians of Duquesne under Coach Al Martin. What a record he's put together. Seven years as the coach of the Indians. He has been in the playoffs each year. And uh, he has got two state titles under his belt. Two years ago and four years ago. And they had a nice history before he came with Bob Carnes and having Bob, done yeah. the same thing. Lay the fine, fine foundation down there. It's tough to follow a legend, but he's done a nice job in doing so. Especially with the legend right there in the press box with you. But it's, it's been a, it's been a very symbiotic relationship. It has worked very well for the two of them. Of course, now you got the kids, the Martin kids, and the Carnes kids are all contributing. Jason Stanton right there will kick it off for DeCoin. He will kick to Corey Parker, number four, and Chris Kiley, number 33. Check it, and Diego number eight, and Corey Parker. And the second half underway, and the dribble kick has certainly been the kick of choice. And covered up across the 40-yard line. They must be look like Pat Finnegan, number 22. Must be awful concerned about. They must be look like Pat Finnegan, number 22. Must be awful concerned about the the run backs because we've seen this in the, in our earlier ball game this morning that uh, nobody is kicking the ball deep. Now you do get bad bounces, but which are more difficult to handle, but you certainly don't want to give the people this kind of field position. Well, they're going to do it, and uh, Bloomington Central with Tom Bardwell leading out Kylie Parker and Provost Finnegan and Wiltz at the skill positions, first and 10 from their own 42-yard line, just the start of things. And straight up the middle goes Chris Kylie, and Kylie gets a couple. He is stopped by uh, Patrick Tolliver, the senior linebacker, 6'1", 209 pounds. The senior linebacker, 6'1", 209 pounder. Now they tried an inside trap right there, and uh, you try you want to build the confidence of the linemen, so you you're almost in a situation as uh, what are they comfortable with? They like the trap, they like the base block, they like the cross block, whatever to develop their confidence. They just ran a quick trap on the first play. Sitting into the near side, here is Bardwell, and he's getting good yardage here on the quarterback option down to the 40-yard line. A fine effort by Tom Bardwell, finally taken down by the cornerback, T.C. Craig, number 22. And there you see Jason James limping a little bit as Bardwell, a fine run, 17-yard play into Duquesne territory. This is just a little trap option right here. And Did it I say up. Duquesne? I'm sorry, Duquesne. <laughs> it comes up underneath here, and watch the pop. He just puts the shoulder down right there and gets a couple extra yardage, and that... Uh, 
brought the underneath here and watch the pop. He just puts the shoulder down right there and gets a couple extra yardage, and that uh, brought the Bloomington people to their feet. But the quarterback wants to run that hard. Obviously, he's inspired at the start of the second half. Jaeger and Provost receivers to the left. And again, they go inside handoff, and this time getting into the secondary for a good gain. Stopped by Hamburger is Kylie, and I'm sorry, Jason Waller. Well, you notice here in the first drive, they've actually had more change-up calls than they did in the whole entire first half, and this change-up calls than they did in the whole entire first half in this series as far as running counters and running traps. And what they're doing is trying to take the pressure off that offensive line so those defensive linemen aren't just pounding on those guys coming up the field. Gain of six. Single back, Kylie. Again, Bardwell on the option, and Bardwell's got lots of room. This is one man all the way down inside the 10, and Tom Bardwell dragged down by Mike Poiter. And Poiter had to come a long way. He's one of the defensive linemen, got downfield quickly, and a second run. This time, a 24 yarder has given the best field position so far to Bloomington Central. The key to that play was a great fake inside that blew the outside linebacker inside, as well as the outside linebacker. They're out inspired, as we mentioned at our halftime. They're out inspired as we mentioned at our halftime. Are they a second half team? It certainly looks like it at this point. From the nine, it's first and goal. And the handoff to Parker. And Parker's got a little bit of room. And Corey Parker tripped up when it looked like he might get away. Nice play coming over Zeb Martin. And Martin with a play that may have saved six right there. Six foot junior. Just a counter trap. See the guard pulling right there. Trap and tackle leading up. And that's a that's a touchdown saving tackle right there. Pick up of two. And that's a that's a touchdown saving tackle right there. Pick up of two yards. There's Zeb Martin. Deepest penetration thus far in the ball game for Bloomington. Bardwell looking, got time. Oh, and in and out of the hands of the receiver. And it looks like it was uh, David Wiltz, number 83, who had that for six. Did a crossing route underneath off the play action pass. It just crossed him underneath, and he had him. He had him. You can see him. Watch him cross right now. You see him coming across the screen, and the other guy going over the top. And the ball is right there. Looked like they ran a pick play, but Wilts couldn't hang on. Looked like they ran a pick play, but Wilts couldn't hang on. So now, Parker to the left, two receivers right, third and goal from the seven. Look inside, touchdown, Bloomington Central. Todd Sproul, Six foot five inches, all six five, two hundred pounds of Todd Stroll makes the play on a look in touchdown for the Saints. Well, just a little dump pass right there, and it it looked like he was trying to draw them off sides because he certainly went down to the to the last second before he called that that particular play. But they must be a second half team because they're they're certainly doing it right here. We've got ourselves a ball game, Mike. Yes, we do. And the extra point will be attempted here by Ryan Summers, number 88. And uh, whistle. Looks like we get a little bit of movement in the line. Now this can change the uh, decision here. It's going to be half the distance. And he might want to go for two. Well, actually, that's uh, Jason Sproul, the sophomore, Todd's brother, who uh, well, they're still, the touchdown. They're still going to kick it. Finnegan will hold. Jason Sproul to kick. Good placement. And it's good. So, it's good. So, as you say, Jack, we've got a ball game. Nine minutes, 12 seconds to go, third quarter. Bloomington Central has taken the opening second half kickoff, and they're within five at 12 to seven. Now, there was no way that he was going to overthrow that or anything else. He just laid that out there real soft. Nice throw right under the linebacker and a nice catch and we keyed on Tom Bardwell and we showed you why because he made that drive two excellent runs on the quarterback option 
He had a pass drop, still came back. Big third down look in pass and six points, then the conversion. So it's a five point ball game, and Bloomington's right back in it. Well, key to running the option is you have to block fewer people. You cut them off, but you don't necessarily have to block everybody. And so that was an interesting uh, setup for Bobby Mays coming back out, talking about how they really didn't do much of a job blocking in that first about how they really didn't do much of a job blocking in that first half. And then he comes out. And his big plays are the option where they're zone blocking or just uh, man blocking and, and letting that quarterback run to the seams. Jason James, number 23, back to get the kick from Stan. This time they kick it. This is Devin Jones. Jones at his 13. Jones brought down by Andy Yeager as he crosses the 25. And DuCoin will go to work from its own 27 yard line. There's Andy Yeager. Nine minutes, seven seconds to go. 14 yard run back on the kickoff. Well, here's a good look now at Trent Waller. And what will DuCoin do here? Well, I think they're going to be doing what they were doing in the first half. They're going to. Waller, and what will DuCoin do here? Well, I think they're going to be doing what they were doing in the first half. They're going to, if they continue with the good play calling as far as running the power and coming back with traps and counters, that's. They've got enough to continue. Lionel Carnes and uh, Jason James, the backfield. Flags go down. Whistles blow. That happened earlier in the ball game where he fumbled a snap. In fact, it was right at the end. Another penalty here. Illegal snap. Five yard penalty. Okay, and now DuCoin is starting to have the wheels uh, fall off a bit. Interesting to see what happened on that as far as an illegal snap. The center might again have moved his arm prior to snapping the ball. Now Mark Knapp. The center might again have moved his arm prior to snapping the ball. Now Martin checking with the side judge there. First and 15. And the inside handoff goes to Jason James. And James to just short of the 30. Bardwell brings him down. A good game. Seven, bring up a second and eight. Eight minutes, 23 and counting. There's Jason James. He and his running mate, Jared Carnes, have been. Eight minutes, 23 and counting. There's Jason James. He and his running mate, Jared Carnes, have been devastating to the outside, at least in the first half. David Lanham, who was the. Bigger ground gainer has been uh, more of the decoy here so far. Atlanta, fullback right there, number 41. Pitch goes to Carnes. And Carnes gets around the corner to the 35, met by Finnegan. As well as number 72, Ryan Hobart. Just a little power toss down the short side of the field, looking for that seam. And uh, they do a nice job. They pull the tackle who's on tackle who's uncovered. Get a lot of people up in that seam. Just power run the ball up in there. Belvedere and Morris, our next game, the 4A championship. Top stocker Bill Gorley will bring that to you right after this one. Meanwhile, there's a lot going to happen here between now and the end. Seven and a half minutes to go, third quarter. And a handoff to Jason James, and he is met by Bardwell coming up on the safety blitz. Finnegan, the cornerback spot. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Well, well, the defensive line of Bloomington looks inspired. They do a nice job here of just coming up and stuffing it. And uh, they didn't play that aggressively in the first half on either side of the ball. A nice job here of just coming up and stuffing it. And uh, they didn't play that aggressively in the first half on either side of the ball. And now they're going to force the coin into a uh, punting situation. And they should end up with pretty good field position here. Fourth and a long one. From their own 37, Jason James will try his second punt. Did a great job on the first one, taking a bad snap and getting good distance. Jaeger and Parker, the two deep backs. And the kick hangs up. It'll go to Jaeger. Jaeger looking for room on the sides in the wall. Jaeger's got some room across the 50, down to the 40. And Andy Jaeger driven out of bounds after a fine return. Into coin territory. Patrick Tolliver, the linebacker, coming up on special teams, knocked Andy Yeager out, but not before 
a 28-yard return of a 39-yard punt. And once again, Central is in business. Hello, folks. Doesn't look like he's going to get to the wall, but he but he doesn't give up on it. He splits that tackle, and right now he's in the wall. And this is just a great effort coming out behind, because that's a touchdown. Down goes a coach. Great effort coming out behind, because that's a touchdown. Down goes a coach. And here back to live action, going up the middle, and almost getting away is Chris Kiley, but Kiley still gets into the secondary, close to a gain of 10. Tolliver, the, the stop, and you feel a momentum shift here. Well, they're fired up. There's no doubt about that. And I think uh, DeCoin wants to slow them down right here and kill this momentum. Alan Martin calls a timeout for his DeCoin Indians, trying to get them to regroup. Bloomington has scored once in the second uh, half. They are driving again. We'll take a break and be back. 6.09. Well, everybody's getting in the act for Bloomington Central. Watch here. Steve Mays, the quarterback's coach, takes a hit from Andy Yeager. But, hey, he's right up. Come on. Go get him, guys. He's right up. Come on. Go get him, guys. Back to live action. Second and one from the 31. And the inside handoff. Once again, it goes to Kylie. Stopped by uh, Hoyter. Now he's got a lot of pizzazz there. He's trying to get the team fired up. He's their leading ground gainer. First down. This copyrighted broadcast presented for the entertainment. This copyrighted broadcast presented for the entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction or other use of this program without the written consent of the Sports Channel strictly prohibited. Well, you think those folks paid to get in? That's the equivalent of the Wrigley Field roof seats. Here at Hancock Stadium. Bardwell again. The play didn't work twice. It works now. And Jaeger gets some yardage, maybe six yards. Stopped by Tolliver. Part of what's hurting Bloomington here, I think, could be Corey Parker's injury. I don't really think that he's at uh, full go. He hasn't been carrying the ball that much. Kylie's been, been more of the workhorse. And I think that the shoulder injury is uh, affecting him more than been more of the workhorse and I think that the shoulder injury is uh, affecting him more than we thought initially Parker the leading uh, rusher in terms of carries has not been able to break anything all day second and four after a gain of six two receivers split left Finnegan and Provost and here comes Tolliver uh, here comes the option play from Bardwell flag goes down as Bardwell crosses the 15 so important to Bloomington on that first drive. Tolliver again makes the stop on Bardwell. These two are getting to know each other very, very well. You see, and the penalty is going to go against Bloomington. Going to be a hold here or a clip. It looks like uh, one of the receivers. It looks like uh, one of the receivers might have. It's going to be from the point of the foul, which was holding. Here we go. They were holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Gene Fowler, the referee from Oak Forest, makes the call. And uh, a good gain turns into a penalty and a loss. Let's take a look right here. Yep, he pulls him down and holds him as the quarterback right, so runs underneath that seam. Back to live action. Bardwell looking across the middle. He's got him. And there's Provost. And Deacon Provost to Tom for that miscue. He's close to the goal line at the five. T.C. Craig dragged him down. Just a short shot over the middle and the pass and run for 25 yards. That was a nice throw by uh, Tom Bardwell right here. He just puts it right in the hole, right underneath the safety and behind the middle linebacker. Some hard running and they've got a first down and first and goal. Good stop by Craig. A some hard running and they've got a first down and first and goal. Good stop by Craig, a five foot seven inch junior. First and goal from the six for Bloomington. Going to a power eye here. Corey Parker. And Parker threads his way. Touchdown. Boy, we're talking about two Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde situations here from the the swing of the momentum from, from DeCoin in the first half to Bloomington Central here in the second half. Wow, what a turnaround. And flat, just completely flat, didn't do anything in the first half, and now they're dominating in the second half here. Two straight drives, two straight scores, and Bloomington Central has a 13-12 to 12 lead over a shot. Second half here. Two straight drives, two straight scores. And Bloomington Central has a 13-12 lead over a shock. 
DuCoin Indians team. Now Bardwell trying to get his team together here. And it looks like they're going to be going for two. Again, they line up in the power eye. Bardwell on the option will take it. And he's got it. Boy, you want to see, you, boy, you want to see, you can talk about what everybody's doing, but you've got to watch this quarterback work. Tom Bardwell, he has taken this team to another level. He really has. He's come out and done it all, but I think also that the change has been to put the ball in his hands by running the option and letting him do some things with it. You can see right here they have the power eye set, but he comes down here. Here's the counter for the, for the uh, touchdown, and a nice job here of running. Now here's the, uh, again the option play with Bardwell with the ball. They're stretching it out. He finds the seam and lunges in there. Big two point conversion here for Bloomington Central Catholic. Tolliver tried to get him but couldn't do it before that man crossed the goal line. So 15 points here with less than eight minutes gone in the third quarter and Bloomington Central looking control looking to become the first team to win championships in three different classifications. 1A, 2A, and now 3A has got the lead at 15 to 12. Jason Sproul will kick off. Jason James, the deep man, along with Jones. And this will be Devin Jones again at his own 16. Jones trying to make a move across the 25. Brought down. Brought down by number 89, Jason Deutsch, a sophomore tight end on the special teams. And Trent Waller now, for the first time, is coming in behind. Well, they're going to be starting off in relatively poor field position compared to what they've been used to. Well, they're going to be starting off in relatively poor field position compared to what they've been used to. Four minutes, 18 seconds to go. Double wing formation here. And Jason James takes the pitch. Looking for a block from Lanham and gets it. A good block from Lanham and James almost got away, much as he did in the first half. Chris Kiley, 155 pound middle linebacker, got him around the ankles. 39 yard drive at six plays, under two minutes. And Bloomington Central, that man's team, Bobby Mays, came from 12 down to go three up, 15 to 12. And there is Bardwell, who, of course, plays both ways, is just about everybody. Came from 12 down to go three up, 15 to 12. And there is Bardwell, who, of course, plays both ways, is just about everybody on this team does. They've only got a roster of about 32 players. But after beyond the 11, the rest are just, you know. <laughs> Look good for calisthenics, I know. 3.55 and counting. Another first down here. As they go to a double wing set. In motion is Carnes, and Carnes takes the pitch. Lanham in front here, too, and Lanham can't make the play that time. Excellent off excellent defensive play. It looked like uh, Deacon Provost, who caught the pass leading to the touchdown, came up from his safety position. What a great play that was by, by Deacon Provost. Just take a take a look at the left part of your screen. Right there, he's fighting off the pressure. Number 20 fights off two blockers. Fights off two blockers and ends up making a play. That's a, just a great high school play. Blockers and ends up making a play. That's a, just a great high school play. Loss of three. Second and 13. And straight ahead, not much happening there. Lanham. Chris Kiley made it. Well, I'd like to say we have a camera in that blip. Uh, we'd like to tell you who the pilot is and uh, what it's advertising on the other side. But this is just fun. This is high school, and the blimp is here. It's our, it's our, it's our generic blimp. All of a sudden, it just has a sign that says blimp. <laughs> Nothing about uh, please marry me, Betty, or anything. No, none of that. that. You know, this guy just has a sign that says blimp. <laughs> yeah. Nothing about uh, please marry me, Betty, or anything. No, none that of that. Means. You know, that's getting kind of tacky anyway. I'd like to go back to the 
proposal. Waller gets away from two tackles, but not from Ryan Hobart. And there is Hobart celebrating. Two ten to go here in the third quarter. This is a totally different Bloomington team. Puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback right here. They ran an inside twist. Brought the guards outside and the tackles came underneath. Put a lot of pressure on the quarterback with the secondary coverage. Brought the guards outside and the tackles came underneath. Put a lot of pressure on the quarterback with the secondary coverage. Led to that sack. Jaeger and Parker are deep. There's Trent Waller talking over strategy as. But for a second, they might try a fake. Jason James is oh. kicking. Who's going to take it? They all decide, no, I will. No, you will. And again, it could have been a lot worse as the AstroTurf bounced, but only to the 13-yard line. 45-yard kick. No return as both return men thought the other one would take it. Well, you know, it's not only in marriage that communication is so important, <laughs> but back there, you know, oh, receiving Jack. punts. It's so important that you talk. You yeah. let each other know somebody's got a call for it. Yeah, that's the coach. Football and therapy combined. Thank you, Jack. Well, anything, you know, we just like to help throwing those little antidotes. He's Jack Mack combined. Thank you, Jack. Well, anything, you know, we just like to help throwing those little antidotes. He's Jack McInerney. I'm Mike Lederman. Bob Albrecht, our sports channel crew in the truck. Hope you're enjoying this one. we got a ball game here. A minute and a half to go. Bloomington has scored twice in this quarter to take a 15 to 12 lead. Saints have the ball again, this time with poor field position. And the kick out to Corey Parker, and Parker snowed under by a group of Indians. Looks like uh, Zeb Martin, number 25, leading the charge, along with Mike, uh, along with Mike Poiter. Nice job of running the option here, putting the pressure on. Nice pitch. Good job of holding right there. <laughs> a nice game. Ah, Jack, I tell you. Option here, putting the pressure on. Nice pitch. Good job of holding right there. <laughs> a nice game. Ah, Jack, I tell you. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Pickup of six. Finnegan to the near side. Provost to the far side. Provost in motion, the eye formation. Again, it's Parker, and Parker gets it to the secondary. He gets close to a first down. You know, if you looked at the, at the tape of the first half and the tape of the second half, it's not so much that what the lineman is doing, but the play calling is uh, so diversified. They're doing such a nice job of going inside on the isolation play, running outside on the option. They're really keeping the coin on their heels, keeping those linebackers at home. Doing a nice job here in the second half. Bob Mays with his play calling. Patrick Asian play running outside on the option. They're really keeping the coin on their heels, keeping those linebackers at home. Doing a nice job here in the second half. Bob Mays with his play calling. Patrick Tolliver, we've called his number a lot. The fine inside linebacker for DuCoin making the stop. 24 seconds and counting down to the end of the third quarter. It's a first down. Now the ball at the 25. Again, they look in. Again, it's Provost. And he is dragged down by Jason James as he crosses the 30. Gain of close to eight, which should end the third quarter with Bloomington on the march again. You know, that ball was thrown behind him, and that's one of their favorite plays is that uh, wide receiver screen. And that is the end of the third quarter. Bloomington Central Catholic has come alive. What will DeCoin do about it? The Saints lead it. Third quarter. Bloomington Central Catholic has come alive. What will DeCoin do about it? The Saints lead it. 15 to 12 on the final 12 minutes coming up. Saints head coach Bob Mays telling us at the half the only adjustments they wanted to make was tackle better and block better. On the other sideline, the assistant coach Steve Mays, one of his brothers, told me that's the only adjustment they've made. No X and O's adjustments. They've simply gone to the board, ball defensively in the tackling side. They're blocking on the offensive side of the ball. But Steve did admit this has been a second half team all year long. The one thing that they want to do this second half is run the football. Keep it on the ground. They don't have to worry about going into the air. And they are indeed playing off the emotion of last week's game and being a second half team. Back upstairs, fellas. All right, there's the yardage. Boy, look at that difference in the uh, boy, look at that difference in the uh, second half compared to the first. As Corey Parker had a good run on second down to get another first down for Bloomington Central from 
The Saints 38. Two receivers split right. Here they run that play again to Deacon Provost. And James almost had himself an interception. Meanwhile, it's a long, long game for Provost down outside the 30. Jason James smelled that play, just missed it. T.C. Craig ended up making the stop about 40 yards later, 29 yards to be exact. And Bloomington is rolling again. Well, you know, they've gone to this play four to five times right now. He picks that off, and he's in for six. On the other hand, he doesn't make the play, and it turns out to be a big gainer for Bloomington Central Catholic. 29 yards on the gain, as we said, and here we see it again. Jason James so close, and yet... A big, big play for the opposition, dragged out by T.C. A big, big play for the opposition, dragged out by T.C. Craig right there. Ball's on the DuCoin, 33 on the fake. Here's Bardwell, nothing doing. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage, missed by a host of Indians. Well, they tried to go back to that pass, but with a little wrinkle to it, he was going to give the pump fake and go up top on a fade route, but that linebacker and the pressure underneath voided that play for him. This may is Jason Wallen, number 67, makes a There's stop the here. pump fake Boom. right there, Mike. He wants to go up top, but you can see the pressure. The coverage, he didn't bite on that pump fake. The coverage was good, and then he got pressure and a good push from the defensive line. Makes a There's stop the here. pump fake Boom. right there, Mike. He wants to go up top, but you can see the pressure. The coverage, he didn't bite on that pump fake. The coverage was good, and then he got pressure and a good push from the defensive line of the coin. One minute gone here in the fourth quarter. The 3A championship game. If you're joining us late to coin in black... Two touchdowns in the first quarter. Couldn't convert on either one. A 12-0 lead into the locker room at halftime. 15 points for Bloomington Central in the third quarter. Two touchdowns and two conversions. And here is Bardwell, a big part of that third quarter on his option. And the quarterback draw there takes him to the 25. Chris Kiley with an outstanding block on the quarterback draw. And there is uh, Zeb Martin making the stop. Well, they're, they're, again, they're mixing up real well. You can see getting the linebackers to drop, and then he just follows the full block underneath and the lead block by the uh, by the fullback. A nice play down down the third and three now. Kylie only five foot seven, but boy, can he put his heart and soul into the ball game. Ten twenty-five to go. Once again, it's a third and two, and trapped is Corey Parker, but Parker gets the first down. Jared Carnes will make the stop. But Real. not before the, the first down yardage. I think we're going to get a measurement here, Mike, that Mark was a little. Well, they brought that Mark back. Skew. Didn't they? Yes, it looked like he was close to the 20, but now he is just inside the 24. This may be a touch short, and it's more than a touch. That's about half a yard short. Any question here? Uh, not on my part. And I don't think on Bobby Mays' part. He's got the momentum. Sending Wilts into the game with the play on fourth. Wilts into the game with the play on fourth. And less than one. Ryan Hobart, number 72, raising his arms for the crowd to get behind the hometown team here. Jaeger and Finnegan to the right. One back is Kylie, fourth and inches. Bardwell trying to draw the opposition offside, gives it to Kylie, and Kylie gets the first down. DeCoin didn't bite. Shane Dunmire making the stop. Kylie but the right side, the left side of the line doing the job there for Bloomington. He's Watch trying here. to read this right here. You can see the tackle blocking down. Just gives it to the fullback, and it's kind of interesting to watch Kylie after he carries the ball. He kind of reminds me of a uh, of a football Pete Rose. How he pops up and runs back to the huddle with a lot of enthusiasm. Trying. It's kind of interesting to watch Kylie after he carries the ball. He kind of reminds me of a uh, of a football Pete Rose. How he pops up and runs back to the huddle with a lot of enthusiasm. Trying to generate enthusiasm for his teammates. Dunmire and Vogel on the stop. First down from the 22. Clock running with nine and a half to go. Flags fly. Short shot under the coverage. It's complete over to Todd Sproul. But it looks like this one's going to come back. It has been a formation penalty here. Called by the line judge. Wilmington Central starting to walk back toward the north end. And they are trying to head for the south end. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-right penalty. Still first down. 
what it was, and I think it was on the wide out. Ball comes back to the 27. <laughs> and I think the, the uh, it was not in on the inside here. It was on the uh, wide receiver. I think took a step prior to the inside here. It was on the uh, wide receiver. I think took a step prior to the snap. First down and 15. Call at the 26. Provost in motion. Again, looking inside and complete to David Wiltz. And Wiltz, nice piece of yardage there, stopped by Jared Vogel. Well, that little fake does an awful lot to those linebackers. You'll watch, he fakes to the right here, which has this other linebacker step up, which creates a seam right here in between those linebackers. So that little fake has a lot to do with the success of that particular play. Ball games nine. Ball is at the 17. Ball games nine. Ball is at the 17. Second and six. Here is Parker. Trying to elude Carnes, but snowing him under is Jared Vogel, who is really playing some outstanding football on this series. Vogel, six foot 185 pound senior. Sometimes you say you got to give a little, gain a little, but uh, in this case, he gave up a little too much here. He's trying to stretch it out. He's got. There's no way he's going to get to the outside. He tries to cut back here. And good flow by the defensive line and a good late hit right there. And uh, there's a little bit of encouragement to either the officials or his <laughs> team. And there's a little bit of encouragement to either the officials or his <laughs> team. Either or or both. On third down. Penetration. Got a man open. Hardwell looking and he's got Wilkes. Wilkes first down yardage inside the 10. Driven out of bounds. And what a play by Bardwell to find him. Jared Vogel one more time. Makes the play, but a big, big first down and goal for Bloomington Central. Well, he was open for a long time, but uh, but there was an awful lot of pressure right there on Bardwell. So he we saw him early. I mean, we would have threw it early, but we don't have that kind of pressure being applied. And uh, he drops it right in the seam. Nice throw. Big first down right there. Keeps the drive alive. And a good play by Wilts to be sure he got that first down because his momentum was carrying him the other way. Nick for Percy, number 44. Running back in there now. And they go to the power eye on first and goal. And here is Corey Parker. Gets one block, but is dragged down quickly. May have gained a yard. Stopped in there by Zeb Martin, the uh, linebacker, number 25. Well, at the top of the show, Mike, we talked about the versatility of Tom Bardwell, how he's thrown for over 1,100 yards and rushed for over 500. And in the second half, the Tom Bardwell that we had talked about has come to play. Well, how he's thrown for over 1,100 yards and rushed for over 500. And in the second half, the Tom Bardwell that we had talked about has come to play, and he has really led them on this 15-point second-half explosion. 14th play of the drive here. You saw a good look at uh, Bardwell, and there he is right there, and here he is on the quarterback option inside the five. It'll bring up a third down and goal from the four. Bardwell has run that quarterback option beautifully. He has thrown when he's had to. He's run when he's had to, and he's used tremendous judgment all through the second half. Well, he's been in a good situation because right here he picks up three or four yards. You find a seat. He's run when he's had to, and he's used tremendous judgment all through the second half. Well, he's been in a good situation because right here he picks up three or four yards. You find a seam, you take it. Don't pitch down there if you don't have to unless the guy's wide open because oftentimes it could result in a big turnover. Now Martin has seen things turn around 180 degrees. This team leading by 12 now finds itself on the short end of a 15-12 score. Third and four. Again, the man in motion, Provost. Again, the quarterback option. Here's the pitch. Oh, and this could be big, big, big trouble. And down, down, down goes Corey Parker by his own 25. David Carter. Put the kibosh on it, a 20-yard loss. Bobby Mays is livid over oh the side my. over there. I mean, right here, you're trying to make something happen, but now, I mean, he's just... Now they're going to try the field goal with Jason Sproul, who's got a good leg. He's kicked three field goals. We saw this him before season. the game, Mike. We thought he was pretty impressive. Yeah, and he does. The no wind rush. is not a factor. It's going to be a 41-yard attempt. 
with under six minutes to go. A very, very with under six minutes to go. A very, very important play here. Stroll will try it from his own 31. Gets the leg. Just has it nope. enough. And it is off to the right. It had the distance, but barely. And off to the right. But a big, big defensive play with some help by the offense there, turning a first and goal into a 20 yard loss. Well, Corey Parker on two plays tried to make something happen that wasn't there. Not only in that last play for the 20 yard loss, but earlier he tried to do the same thing, cut back and lost a lot of yardage. And that, in this kind of a situation, when you're down in the red zone, you can't afford to give up yardage. You got to just pound it up in there and take your lumps. So now DeCoin trailing by three as you look at Corey Ford to give up yardage. You got to just pound it up in there and take your lumps. So now DeCoin trailing by three as you look at Corey Parker. They go with the double wing, put Jason James in motion, and they give it to Lanham. And Lanham, number 41, breaks into the secondary, an 11 12 yard gain across the 30, stopped by Chris Kiley, but. A first down now for DuCoin, and this is an excellent opportunity for the Indians because they have just been as flat as Bloomington was in the first half. Well, they needed that kind of a run. That's a real good effort by Dave Lanham, 144 attempts, 974 yards, 19 touchdowns this half. Well, they needed that kind of a run. That's a real good effort by Dave Lanham, 144 attempts, 974 yards, 19 touchdowns this season, and a 6.8 Average. He leads their scoring with 19 touchdowns and 114 total points. Time starting to become a factor. Under five minutes to go. Again, the 4A game will follow Belvedere and Morris. Right after this, we've got a long way to go here. Back in the wishbone. And Pass. the pitch to Jason James, who will throw. Got a man out there, but Andy Yeager is closer on the defense. Ryan Elder, the intended receiver. Yeager had it covered like a blanket. He really did, and... Uh, the receiver kind of ran into the short side of the field instead of going up the field. You want to give that guy an opportunity. He doesn't throw the ball that much just to air it out. He doesn't, he shouldn't have to show accuracy as much as he should show distance. You can see right here, good job by the corner. He just starts dropping back, and you can see uh, he just throws it out of bounds. He throws it up in the stands. Wilmington Central used nearly eight minutes of the fourth quarter on the last drive. He throws it up in the stands. Wilmington Central used nearly eight minutes of the fourth quarter on the last drive. Uh, started actually at the end of the third quarter. Four minutes and 41 seconds to go. Second down from the 31. Again, Wallow looking over the middle. And it's intercepted. He's got a wall Once in front of him. It is Kylie. And Kylie, one man to beat. And dragged down inside the 10 yard line after a 30 yard reception. Making the play was the fullback Lanham, but a big, big effort. You see the anguish on the face of Trent Waller, but it was such a fabulous play by the linebacker, Chris Kiley. We told you about his heart. Hands aren't bad either. Now his teammates quickly coming over to console Waller. He's got to play some more. He just... Uh... Just lays it out here and it just gets picked by the linebacker. Never moved, came right underneath. Gets picked by the linebacker, never moved, came right underneath. And I really thought he was going to go all the way. Back to live action. That a big, big play by Dunmeyer. Stopping Corey Parker. I'm sure uh, Bobby Mays told Corey Parker, forget trying to make the big play. Just punch it up the middle of the field and take what you can get. Go forward. Four minute mark here. 15 to 12, the team in white leading Bloomington Central trying for its third. Four minute mark here. 15 to 12, the team in white leading Bloomington Central trying for its third state championship. One in each of the first three divisions. Power I. The look once again, it's Parker. Parker cutting it inside and still goes nowhere. Good, good pursuit. That was the point. play that Corey Parker ran for the overtime touchdown to win the semifinal. This time he could not shake free and get outside, thanks to Zeb Martin in part. Well, you see good rotation here by the secondary coming up and good flow by the defensive line. You're stretching it out. There's no way that he's going to flow by the defensive line. You're stretching it out. There's no way that he's going to get anything out of that. Uh, you can see that Waller knows. Uh, you know he feels badly, but... He's going to have to go in there. He's led this team all year long, and he's done well. 
He's got to get himself together because way or one way or another, he's going to be out there. The emotion of high school football in a state championship game and 17-year-old kids. Timeout called by Bloomington Central. Three minutes, five seconds to go. Big third down play coming up when we come back. Well, there's the DeCoin Indian exhorting his team to hold them. Hold Bloomington Central. Well, there's the DeCoin Indian exhorting his team to hold them. Hold Bloomington Central here on third and goal from the six. They lead by three. Again, the quarterback draw. Touchdown, Wilmington. Tom Bardwell has done it again. The quarterback draw. He saw the corner. He saw the opening. And Tom Bardwell has, with three minutes, one second to go, given Bloomington a big, big leg up on its third state championship. He's quite an athlete, and he saved his best for the end here in the second half. He's really come on to lead this team. Just a, com a complete turnabout, a whole change in the script. Sproul will try the extra point. Right through. So with three minutes and one second to go, this has been, uh, as we say, a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde game. It has been totally different from one half to the next. But the big half right here, Bloomington Central, 22 unanswered points. And they lead it, and they're three minutes away from a state title. Tonight's game has been produced and directed by Bob Albrecht, our graphics coordinator, Doug Stanton, and remote facilities provided by Trio Video in Chicago. And we'd like to thank our spotters, Roger Kraft for DeCoin and John Brady for Bloomington Central, and all the folks here at the IHSA who are making this uh, such a fun and interesting weekend. And we'd also like to thank the weatherman. <laughs> you can't imagine how beautiful it is here. A crisp fall day as opposed to an Arctic night, which is what we're somewhat used to when we come down. We've really experienced all forms of weather conditions here. Yeah. Most of them uh, unfavorable. <laughs> it's our eighth year doing these ball games, and I'd say far and away this has been the best weather anyone could ever have, and you can see here doing these ball games, and I'd say far and away this has been the best weather anyone could ever have, and you can see the quality of the play certainly has been a factor too. Scroll to kick it off. James in the middle. They squib it. Craig takes it on his 16. TC tried to get to the wall, and he is ridden down by Finnegan as he tried to go backwards instead of forwards. 2.56 to go. One more look at the touchdown, and we've seen this play work. Now it works for six. Well, I think what he really wanted to throw it here, and he just scrambled out. He saw the outside corner, and he just wanted to scramble and get in there. Following the interception, three plays, seven yards, a minute 28. And that looks to have iced this ball game. But never say it's a fait accompli. And that looks to have iced this ball game. But never say it's a fait accompli. Or that things are finished. Unbalanced line right. Pitch to Carnes and Carnes. Written down, kept in bounds. Ryan Hobart makes the initial makes the initial hit, and the flag goes down. Let's go down to Joe Passion. You got a flag. Here. You guys were talking earlier about Trent Waller and that interception he threw to Kylie moments ago, and really he hasn't handled it very well down the sidelines, walking up and down the sidelines and crying. Whereas a number of his offensive linemen and teammates and coaches all coming up trying to jack him up, keep his spirits up. He hasn't been able to do it, and how that affects him in this very important drive will be determined on how he reacted to that interception. You see uh, Nathan Higgerson, number 75, giving him some encouragement. Here's the call on Dead the penalty. Ball foul, personal foul against White, 15 yards, first down. Well, that's something that'll make a coach scream, because that's the last thing that 
Wilmington Central wanted to do here is commit a dead ball foul to give any kind of advantage, any kind of field position to a, a team that's down. That's right. They gained 15 yards, and the clock doesn't even tick off a second. Two minutes and 28 seconds left. It's a first down for DuCoin. And they go to the eye with the unbalanced line right. Waller. Good look over the middle. It's complete to Ryan Elder. And Elder, number 84, taken down after first down yardage by Tom Bardwell. Real nice catch. Good Real. sharp throw, too. And he knew that uh, Elder was there. Pick up a 15. Just watch the hands right here. Good job. Bardwell playing underneath will give that kind of reception if it's made that well. And there it is. He earned that one among three. It's made that well. And there it is. He earned that one among three receivers. Unbalanced line to the left now. To 11 to go. And here's the pitch. Jason James. Look at the moves by James who almost breaks it inside the 40-yard line of Bloomington Central. Another first down. Andy Hennigas makes the stop. Well, they're definitely fighting the clock here with this uh, running game. They need to go up top to use up some yardage here. Each team has clock. two timeouts left. Under two minutes. First and ten from the 39-yard uh, 39 39-yard line of Bloomington. Waller, good look once again as a flag goes down. Two flags go down. And going down also is Ryan Elder after a gain down to the 20 yard line, a pickup of 19. But again, two flags were thrown, one in the secondary and one at the line of scrimmage. Well, in the secondary, that two things. It could have been a pick play, which got him open. Yep. It's against uh, DeCoin. You, 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 can't, you can't pick right here. You can't Here's knock the pick one play. You see another. right here. Boom. Right there, there's the pick play. Knocks off the guy that's defending that receiver. You can see right here. That was Deacon Provost who got clocked over there. That's what we call a pick play, just like in basketball, except it's the same rule. You can't make contact and knock him down. An offensive pass interference, 15 yard penalty, loss of down, second down. So that's the worst news you can get. You lose the down and you lose the yardage. And it was uh, quite obvious that's what that was. Ball comes back on the DeCoin side of the 50-yard line to the 46. A minute 44 to go. Second down, 25 DuCoin. Second down, 25 DuCoin. Trails by 10. There's Al Martin. T.C. Craig, number 22, next to him. Single back. Waller gives it off to Jason James, and Jason James gets tripped up. By Chris Kylie again. There was a lot of room if he had gotten by Kylie, but Kylie, who might wasn't supposed to play, actually, has played a whale of a game on both sides of the ball. Well, they're getting the linebackers in the secondary to drop off, so they're hoping they have some running room underneath here. And you can see just a good job here of uh, middle linebacker staying home. Clock is running now with a minute 15. There's Jason James's numbers. Most of that coming in the first half. 10.5 yards a carry, but yards a carry. But again, he's been held in check here in the third and fourth quarter. Waller's going to run that option now. And Trent Waller gets back across the 50, but a nice gain, except when you're down 10 points and the clock is running on you. Hobart and Leo Flynn making the stop. Timeout called. The second of three timeouts charged against DuCoin. You can see right here, he's trying to get outside. He, he cannot get outside there that they have the perimeter stacked up and he tries to come underneath. I don't remember the last time, Mike, that I have, we've done a ball games here and we've done quite a few of them where I, we have seen such a dramatic turnaround, just so completely dramatic turnaround as far as uh, one team and the other. And again, Bloomington Central seemed as though it could not get out of its own way in the first half, much the way DuCoin seems now, but DuCoin almost does not seem to be a factor here. Bloomington Central is playing itself, you know? The, DuCoin came out, scored two touchdowns right away, and then, as Aurora Central had the opportunity to do to Bloomington in the semifinal, could have put Bloomington away and did not. You know, they missed a couple of conversions, a one-point, a two-point, so it's a 12-0 game, and then Bloomington Central comes out, 
third quarter, goes down the field three out of the four times it's got the ball, gets a couple of turnovers, and lo and behold, 22 straight points. Well, I also think that they changed their game plan or adjusted in the second half. They just seem to have more versatility in their play calling than they did in the first half. They were just very matter of fact in the first half. The second half they came out, ran counters, reverses, traps inside, took some pressure off the offensive linemen, and they responded. 52 ticks on the clock. Counters, reverses, traps inside, took some pressure off the offensive linemen, and they responded. 52 ticks on the clock. It's a fourth down and 19 to go. Waller looking for the screen. He's got Jared Carnes. Down goes the official. Carnes looking to get to that first down marker, and he does, and more. Jared Carnes just short of the goal line inside the 10. What an effort. Stopped at the last minute by Andy Yeager, and don't tell me this kid doesn't play. Jared Carnes, a 45-yard run, 39 seconds to go. What an effort. Outstanding play. They they were blocking anybody and everybody in a different color jersey right here. You can see they're taking on anybody in white or black. <laughs> or both. Or both. <laughs> and that was an opportunity that only presents itself rarely in a lifetime for you. Almost high missed player. him there. Great effort here. And, and look at Jaeger. And Jaeger actually does a sliding yeah. tackle on him with the feet. I have never seen that. As we come back to live action. Clock down to 34 seconds here as Carnes goes inside the five. Carnes and the last timeout being used by Alan Martin goes inside the five. Carnes and the last timeout being used by Alan Martin. Carnes has had an outstanding ball game tonight. The youngest of three brothers to have played in the state championship game. And he's certainly done his name proud tonight. Well, situation now. Second and goal on the four for DuCoin. They trail, as you see, by 10. This is not a team that kicks field goals. Generally, there's Bobby Mays. What a tradition there. Just about all his coaches, as Bobby graduated from the school he's coaching. Got a couple of brothers on the staff and a long, long tradition. Was an assistant here back when they won their first state title in 1982. That, that hat's been around for a while. Yeah, too. I think I think the I think the hat. That's what we called in the Marine Corps a salty cover. <laughs> That's when it was when the school was founded. <laughs> Jason James split far left. Again on second down, looking and overshoot stamp. The intended receiver, 29 seconds to go. There is Jason Stanton. Well, they punch one in, an onside kick. Uh huh. And a 50 yard field goal. Or they no, I'm assuming there. the onside kick that he picks up and runs with it. I see. Another time that we, well, earlier in the game, we had him open on that same play and we overthrew him. Runs with it. I see. Another time that we, well, earlier in the game, we had him open on that same play and we overthrew him. Third down play. Again, that's not as important as the clock. And now we'll get a whistle here. Did the defense off? Nope. Draw them off? No, that's Clint Kirby, the 300 pounder, and he knows it's on him. See Clint pop it up right here. And he's Clint. gonna punish himself right here. All right. That's really not that critical a yardage thing. It gives them more room to work with. Absolutely. You know. Stretches the field out a little you more. Know. All right. That's really not that critical a yardage thing. It gives them more room to work with. Absolutely. You know? Stretches the field out a little you more. You know you got to get into the end zone. You got to get into the end zone on two plays. So here we go. Still 29 seconds to go. Stanton left. Waller. Let's it go. Flags fly. Pass falls incomplete. Good pressure put on by Bloomington Central. Well, they're doing a, a real good job of stretching this out and putting a lot of pressure on that quarterback. And and the other part of it, too, is the secondary is doing an excellent job of coverage. 
Sometimes the coverage will break down when a quarterback scrambles, but the secondary of Bloomington Central Catholic has done a nice job of staying with their man. Their personal foul face match penalty on the defense. Half the distance of the goal, still third down. Well, so that negates basically the previous penalty, so it's third down now and goal. Ball will be just inside the five yard line. There's Trent. There's Trent Waller. He has come back through that big interception, but he's brought to coin back here. Certainly with an outside, very long shot chance, but there's the face, face mask. Hobart looked like he grabbed him a little bit. Very good. Bit. Got him open. Jason James. And James is snowed under, and that should do it. Well, the tight end was the guy that was really open, wide open in the end zone. Leo Flynn, they cannot stop the clock. Duc Ducoin cannot stop the clock. They're going to try one more play. Will they be able to get it? No, they don't. And that's the end of the ball game. Quiet game it was. And Bloomington Central, left for dead at the end of 24 minutes, comes back roaring with 22 straight points and becomes the first school in Illinois high school history to win state championships in three different classes. 1A, ships in three different classes. 1A, 2A, and now in 3A. All the years we've been doing this, it's really amazing to see the turnaround. And we've had other teams that have come back and, and maybe plugged away, and, and the other team still played a good uh, second half, but this was a total turnaround, just two... Two completely different teams coming out at the beginning of the ball game and then in the second half. Bloomington Central and DuCoin shake hands. What a game this was. Certainly exciting. And a game that, that swung almost immediately from the second half kickoff. Absolutely no doubt, no doubt about it. That opening drive where Tom Bardwell all of a sudden he comes out. And he's the, you know, I'll take charge, I'll do it all type of guy, and he certainly did it. And I think a, a, a major part of that was the play calling selection in the second half, having Bardwell involved in more plays, even with the running plays on the option. Boy, there is another. Uh, <laughs> oh, mercy my. me. He must have dozed off at one point uh, in the last several days and oh, had a my. prank played. Oh, my. Well, he'll be back. He's an underclassman, and certainly uh, we'll tell Mom about that one if she doesn't know already. Bloomington Central, your 3A champions, will be back with the award. Back at Hancock Stadium, the DuCoin Indians. You can see the emotion on the cheerleaders and the players' faces. They had this game, it seemed, but the game is 48 minutes. They won the first half, but not the second. 22 to 12, the final. A 3A championship for Bloomington Central. A 3A championship for Bloomington Central, a school with an enrollment of fewer than 200. And their quarterback, as we take a look at Alan Martin and his second place trophy and the team there the Illinois High School Association has instituted and a they uh, to they're pretty upset but again they can look back with pride on the way they played the state finals players coaches they had a and great season but that uh, each of the teams competing in this championship it's tough to go out that way in that second half going so flat the combination of Bloomington Central Catholic playing extremely well a winning attitude at the class three Ducoin came out smoking led by their two running backs Jared Carnes and Jason James, but their leading ball carrier all year, David Lanham, the fullback, really with two running backs. Jared Carnes and Jason James, but their leading ball carrier all year, David Lanham, the fullback, really was not a factor. Didn't see him. Didn't know where he was in the second half. One had one good run late uh, with under three minutes left in that drive, but, but uh, really disappeared. 19 touchdowns the on the season, seven yards a carry, to Coach and he was uh, uh, taken out of the play Mr. by Bloomington Collins. Central. But Bloomington Central, for all their heroics in the second half, were still back on the bus in uh, at Bloomington Central by the time the game started here at Hancock Stadium. They were nowhere to be found. Well, they certainly uh, didn't need to get acclimated to this setting, <laughs> yeah. having played here all year right. long, So, uh, and they certainly knew how to get here. And we're very comfortable with the setting. They mixed up their plays well. 
Some clutch catches by Provost, Pat Finnegan, a big catch by David Wilkes, a tight end. Corey Parker again, their big gun as far as a uh, rusher. We knew he had an injury, but he had no place to go and, and almost caused palpitations for his coaching staff, losing 20 yards when they had a first and goal down at the four. Well, you know, getting back to, uh, to uh, Landon a second, we didn't really see him them using him much early on in the beginning of the ball game, even though he was the workhorse. They really were going to Carnes and James on the counter actions and that type of thing. So it, it really wasn't a factor of Landon disappearing as they really didn't yes. seem to call his plays that often. Right, and James uh, James on, on the sweeps and Carnes on and the sweeps seem to be well, picking through. Their Jordan problems Allen. first started Coach in the secondary. Martin they would always be getting by the line of scrimmage. Some excellent kick-out blocks for one running back for the other running back. Right, and land them in it here, and we're very comfortable with the setting. They mix up their plays well. Some clutch catches by Provost Pat Finnegan. A big catch by David Wilkes, a tight end. Corey Parker again, their big gun as far as a uh, rusher. We knew he had an injury, but he had no place to go and, and almost caused palpitations for his coaching staff, losing 20 yards when they had a first and goal down at the four. Well, you know, getting back to, uh, to uh, land them a second, we didn't really see him them using him much early on in the beginning of the ball game, even though he was the workhorse. They really were going to Carnes and James on the counter actions and that type of thing. So it, it really wasn't a factor of land them disappearing as they really didn't seem to call his plays that often. Right, and James, uh, James on, on the sweeps. And Carnes on the sweeps seem to be picking through. Their problems first started in the secondary. They would always be getting by the line of scrimmage. Some excellent kick-out blocks for one running back for the other running back. Right, and Landon, in a, in a sense, was a key to that because he was the fake man with the fullback dive yeah. off of that action. And he also made a, a couple of key blocks in there, too, to spring his teammates as well. Uh, when, you, when you're talking about Tom Bardwell, you are talking about a young man who didn't play quarterback in an organized high school setting until last year. Last year, this team went two and seven, had a miserable season, but it developed Bardwell as a quarterback. He's better known as a golfer. He's a four handicap golfer. I'll and they done. talked we'll to him. We'll have to set up a, uh, right, we'll a, time a three with him. miserable season, but it developed Bardwell as a quarterback. He's better known as a golfer. He's a four handicap golfer. I'll and they done. talked we'll to him. We'll have to set up a, uh, right, we'll a, time a threesome. Him, right? yeah. yeah, see if we can get a tea time over there at the Muni. But meanwhile, he has developed. He's a Ladies bright kid, 6'1. He's got the height. 180 pounds, Allen, and you can see the, the, you can see the ability he has uh, that came Moby through here in the biggest game of his young football career. Andy well, he's really an athlete. That's quite obvious about because of what he did in the second half, running the option. And of course, we had mentioned in the in the pregame that uh, in our opening, you know, he had uh, 1,100 yards passing, over 500 rushing, and he put that all together in the second half. He he ran the ball well, and he threw the ball well. And of course, he's a smart young man. He shows great leadership. Bloomington Central was outplayed at every phase of the game last week in the semifinals. As somebody said, all Bloomington did that game was win. And it started much the same way. They fell behind 14-0. They were down at halftime 21-14 to and ended up winning that game on a fine sprint in overtime by Corey Parker. And then tonight, Tom Bardwell, the quarterback, really stands out as the MVP here. Along certainly with uh, with Chris Kiley, well, the fullback about, slash linebacker. Well, about two hours ago, we would have never have thought that they'd be standing up there taking that trophy right now. But there, as you mentioned, there's two halves to football. Yeah, I didn't come up with that line originally. I, I want to tell you, I did take that from someone else. I thought I had heard it somewhere before, but I didn't want to run a disclaimer on you. The announcement being made now that Bloomington Central becomes the first high school in Illinois history to win in three different classes. It started out with a 2A title at 82, a 1A in 87, and now a 3A in uh, 1994. And, and just to recap, how you're classified is not so much by how small or large your school is, but the enrollments of the teams you play. So Bloomington Central, which always played a a, uh, a much a bigger schedule than its enrollment dictates, gets maybe in a way penalized for that. But right now they'll take it. Thank that's you. A, that's an interesting <laughs> sign, right? I love there, that. That kid's got a lot of courage. I'll bet he's probably still on the golf.